is the season of holiday shopping and all those big retail days with their fancy names, Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, and of course today, Cyber Monday. The deep discount ads are everywhere, and scenes like these of frenzied shoppers dashing for discounts are airing on a loop across the country. And while Cyber Monday sales are still being tabulated, there are conflicting reports about the past four days. According to the National Retail Federation, in-store and online sales were down 11 percent compared to last year, but their database is based on consumers' self-reporting. The analytics firm ShopperTalk installs devices in stores that count shoppers and found sales on Thanksgiving and Black Friday fell just half a percent, even though the number of people out shopping on Thanksgiving Day was up more than 27 percent, if you can follow all that. <laughs> Here in Massachusetts, the blue laws bar most stores from opening on Thanksgiving, but with sales starting earlier every year, are these special savings days losing their luster? I'm joined now by John Hurst, who is the president of the Massachusetts Retailers Association. Welcome back to Greater Boston, John. Thank you, Emily. Great to be here. So are these label days over? Let's hope so. Black Friday, Cyber Monday, small business, although I kind of like that small business Saturday one for the time being anyway. That's I new. do too. Yeah. That's important to, <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. to stress. And, and, and we need more than one day, by the way, for small businesses. But, but you know what? I, I think the reality is every day is consumer day. You know, they have so much power today, and it's right there on their smartphone. And there's so much competition that every store is, is, is fighting for that dollar, fighting for that, that traffic into mm -hmm. uh, either into the front door or onto their website that you're going to see lost leaders virtually every day. So if you're waiting for Black Friday to get a big deal, you know, a lot of folks got it well before Black Friday, and, and you're still going to get it. Do you think there was a bit of a pushback, maybe even a turnoff? this time because they rolled it back so far, right? You know, the stores were open Thanksgiving, you know, yeah. maybe at noon or beyond, but th th people might have found it dis distasteful because forcing people to work for one thing. Well, I, you know, certainly we didn't open here in Massachusetts, nor did they in Rhode Island or Maine, the three states with the, 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 the blue laws. You know, it's, it's interesting. I, I, it's an issue of choice. I think some people do find that distasteful. I, it's not my cup of tea. I'd rather watch football, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, but some people, you know, certainly Thanksgiving Day for shopping online on mm. your smartphone is now much bigger than Cyber Monday. So it's interesting. Yeah, people are sitting around watching one eye on the football game, one eye on your that's phone. That's right. And you're spending uh, a lot of money. So, so, you know, people are using it. But, um, you know, are, is it going to continue to are we going to continue to see people go into the stores on Thanksgiving? I don't know. I think it's very much a trial and error period that we're in. All right, let's bring in another somewhat controversial perspective on all this. In a Washington Post column over the weekend, Luke O'Neill compares images of brawling customers to scenes from The Hunger Games. He's not critical of the bargain hunters, but rather those who relish videos of these battles, writing, this kind of gawking shows how lurid interest in these stories is connected to issues of class and race in America. Luke, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you coming. So I actually had somewhat of the same reaction to this, that it, there's something really kind of off-putting about it and something of a class issue. And that we're watching these things over and over thinking, oh, well, I would never do that. And that's kind of the sense you get. It is. And I, I think that it's important uh, to point out that, that while I don't think fighting over you know, a TV is, is, is something you know, very admirable and, and, and the people who do it, you know, there's certainly not something that I would be proud of if I was, you know, fighting somebody over a good. But I think the the reason uh, we sh we we're sort of shaming these people, uh, and it's really easy to do, and without thinking about well, maybe this is the only time a year that they're able to afford that TV for their family. That you know, it's been the price has been slashed, and they've been saving up the money to get there. So you know, uh, the tensions are high in those situations, and and there's a lot of pressure we put on people to buy but, these things. But John in the is first saying place. that's not that's no longer true. That basically these things are on sale all the time. This is bogus, this idea that it's deeply discounted at one. I mean, I, I got more emails today from Bloomingdale saying, like, another, add another 25, add another. It's like, I don't even know, you know, it's, it just keeps coming and coming and coming. Well, yeah, as you, you, you're, you're confused, you know, it seems like you're a little bit mm -hmm. confused about what the, the ideas yourself. And, 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 you know, John uh, certainly looks at this more than the average person does. I think the average person doesn't really have a sense of, uh, you know, we're still, they're still convinced that this is the yeah, day and this is the not. week, and it, you know it's hard, it's hard to to keep track of all this the deluge of inform, information that mm -hmm. comes in. But your bigger issue is really about these videos that 
There's, you see them on local television stations, networks even. It's mm -hmm. just one of these things that gets played over and over, and especially if there's a little bit of violence. Right, and I think unfortunately they also uh, play even better if there's a racial element mm -hmm. involved as well. And uh, I, I can tell you from the reactions that I got to the, okay. to the piece on the Post, uh, just from the worst people imaginable, commenters are always awful, mm. but, yeah. <laughs> but on, on this story in particular, uh, and a lot of people relating it to, you know, to the, the images we see in Ferguson, Ferguson and, and just in, in a really disgusting way. And it kind of turned my stomach a little bit to read all the mm -hmm. reactions to it. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of the videos that they, they seem to run on the networks and, and people share online do, do have, definitely have a, a sort of racial and class yeah. component to them. Hmm. John, in the end, though, I mean, how, how does this always get measured? I always feel like we, we, we do a thousand of these stories leading up to Christmas Day and then everything just disappears. Like, like for instance, last year, what, what was the net gain from you know, either a Black Friday or a Cyber Monday or, frankly, the entire holiday shopping season? Was it up? It was up, not much, uh, a little bit over 3%. Which, when you think about that, that's you know just a little bit over the rate of inflation. Mm. So if you're looking to actually make a profit and and hopefully expand your business, hope expand your employment, it's tough to do uh, because you know there's mm. just so many options out there for the consumer today. So you know they're they're going to shop in so many different places online in the next town, in the next state. Mm. Uh, it's it's tough to make a profit. It All is. Right. John Hurst, Luke O'Neill, thanks. Thank, Thank you both you. for coming.